As we enter the third decade in a post-Columbine world, schools around the nation continue to build resilience to their ultimate challenge, protecting students on campus from the worst-case scenarios. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency builds networks to identify best practices and develop guidance for students, teachers, and parents alike. Guidance that begins in an unexpected place with the United States Secret Service. So there's many aspects to the Secret Service protective mission. Most of it is what people are familiar with, the motorcades, the uniformed division officers, physical protection. The reason that we are now even um, more uh, involved in um, community prevention efforts, for example, preventing targeted school violence, it happened after Columbine. Uh, after that incident, our director, using this methodology that we've just, just developed as a best practice uh, on prevention, approached the Secretary of Education to look at school uh, violence. And that's how the Safe School Initiative came about. It was a collaboration to examine school violence. And one of the things that we see is there are many aspects to school safety and other safety and security. For example, if you're looking at the whole gamut of security measures, you want to be able to prevent, protect, respond, and recover. And our expertise is the prevent piece. How can we get community members to be invested in their own safety by being empowered to report information about a person of concern, whether that's a student community or a student's concerned about another student, a teacher notices a student, who to report that information to, knowing that that information will be acted upon and that there is accountability for identifying what are some of the risk management strategies that can be utilized to prevent that risk, whether it's mental health care, working with parents, what are the resources in the community that can be used to help that person um, so that they build resiliency and capacity to handle whatever problem they're having. After the Columbine tragedy, I founded the Safe to Tell initiative, which is a prevention model for the state of Colorado, um, really to focus on prevention, early intervention, and uh, providing a voice to young people so that we could remove the code of silence. The whole goal with Safe to Tell was really doing education and awareness in the community, training all school staff, whether you were a bus driver or custodian, in best practices surrounding school safety, and then the community and parents, and really teaching them how to recognize concerning behavior. We have to put ourselves in the shoes of today's young people. Their concern is being retaliated against, socially excluded because they're not part of the cool group anymore because people are suspicious that they're the ones making the report. That information along with their concern and us being able to see either a fight or a threat or the actual incident really helps law enforcement and schools respond more effectively. And it's making sure that when that's occurring that they can recognize that there's, there's hope and there's help. I think is one of the best things we can do. We try to make connections with our kids one-to-one -one so that if something is happening or something is bothering a child, that they feel very comfortable to say, I'm just very apprehensive. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think something bad is going to happen because, and then they give us information that we can act on or that we can go research. It's not just about fear of, of something bad happening, but how we can all work together to stop it. And so we've tried to create all of these avenues through training, through information, campaigns, through video campaigns, through all types of different sourcing to make sure that kids and parents know that it's, it's all about all of us and it takes every voice to keep all these kids safe. We teach them that, you know, sometimes interacting with an adult or telling someone is going to not only help them, it's going to help the person who they're, they're protecting because now we can get them services, we can get them help. Those are the life-saving behaviors we see and that's when we've been able to prevent so many tragedies, and teachers and schools do it every day. While Susan integrates federal reporting and best practices into her Safe to Tell program, her husband Rich Payne integrates that behavioral detection mindset with his multifaceted crisis response center. Less than an hour south of Columbine, Rich is the director of the Douglas County School District's Department of Safety and Security, which aggregates anonymous tips, communicates with various campuses around the district, and operates a dispatch center integrated with law enforcement patrol units, and school resource officers. Prior to Columbine, schools weren't really thinking about, they always thought about safe, safety and security, but actually having security teams and schools housed with SROs and all the different stuff that's in place now, um, 
Columbine kind of really changed that, and that made people start to look at different things they needed to do. Do we have mental health teams in place now? Do we have crisis teams? All the different type of responses now that we have to look at as a result of what happened at Columbine. We're trying to make sure that every person that steps foot on our property that we're keeping safe and that we have a plan in place and if something happens, we have people that are trained to make sure that we have an effective result. All 8,000 employees do online training for safety and security. My team also goes out and we go out to every school and we also do an additional one hour live training to every staff member so they can actually ask questions. Then, in turn, we actually do a lockdown drill the same day in the school. Talk to the kids, talk to the teacher, make sure that we're setting them up for success. Every person that works in the school is actually part of our security team. I rely on every teacher, every principal, every administrator, every janitor, every counselor, every person that is employed by the school district, they're a part of our solution. We're not trying to build fortresses, we're not trying to build prisons. So what I tell all the teachers is they're the heroes. They signed up as educators and now they're protectors. When a parent drops their student off at the beginning of the day, they're expecting that their kid is safe in the school. The model that we use, the Secret Service Services model, that is now adapted for schools and outlined in the guide, has to be adapted to that school's um, resources, um, that school's context, and so on. And so it outlines fundamental framework for how to do that in a school. So as a superintendent or an administrator in a school, you, if you have threat assessment capabilities already, maybe thinking about where those can be enhanced using this model. If you don't have anything at all, the biggest thing to start with is you need to identify a group of multidisciplinary team members that are going to establish a threat assessment team, be part of this team, act on report of concerns, and begin to establish some kind of processes and procedures for how to do that. Uh, and that includes crisis management planning and so on, not just in terms of identifying individual, but really the whole continuum of school security. So the first steps is identifying who would be on a team. And that usually includes an administrator, a school resource officer, a teacher, a guidance counselor, as well as a mental health professional. Those really should form the basic framework of how to begin to establish these programs in schools. While what happened in Colorado is unique, what this video illustrates is how preparedness and prevention strategies enable any school across the nation to prevent tragedy from occurring. This can be something as simple as maintaining an inventory of keys given to employees who may retire or switch districts, encouraging response from employees and students alike to report when they feel a concern, and interfacing with law enforcement, emergency managers, and other responders who can come to your campus and identify security gaps that may need to be closed. This collective strategy to preparedness encourages not only an effective means of responding to threats, but may prevent harm from occurring in the first place.